We are continuing our in-depth look at the city of Utrecht in the Netherlands, one of the most beautiful places you'll ever see. Famous for its dining terraces that are right at the level of the water in the main canal, with the city streets and shops up above. Of course, there are lots of bicycles and historic brick buildings in that typical Dutch style. At the same time, it's a modern city with a very high standard of living, one of the largest universities in the country, and plenty of up-to-date shops set in this marvelous historical atmosphere. There's wonderful canals that go through the middle of town like you find in many Dutch cities. And here the canals are especially interesting because they're split level. You have the street level up above and the terrace and water level down below with the sidewalk restaurants and the cellar barrel vaulted basements. So it's really quite an interesting combination. In this segment, we are very fortunate to be taking a walk through the old town with one of the very best of the local guides, Gitta Rosendahl, and he's going to take us on a walking tour describing the setting, the people, the buildings, and some of the history. And at the end of the program, we'll have a look at Utrecht by night with their special lighting and lively restaurants by the canal. You'll discover that Utrecht is a magical place that you're going to love. Coming up later in the program, we'll take you on a boat ride through the canals of the historic center. And we'll look inside several of the important museums, covering history, art, and culture with some interactive hands-on activities. The historic center is small enough that you could just wander around on your own without any particular plan, but it does help to have some information especially from a guide like Gitta, who's a graduate of the local university specializing in cultural geography. And I think, in my opinion, it's a good, uh, good city to live in because it's not that big and it has a nice atmosphere, a lot of history, and that's, of course, what I like. And uh, when you need something, well, you can buy it, it's everywhere. And uh, I like to show people uh, the atmosphere, especially in the old city. And uh, Utrecht is also uh, the heart of the country, so it's important. It's, it's, it's lots of connections, motorways, tra train station, and so on. So from here, it's easy to reach every part of the country. The economy is, is growing quite well here at the moment because it's in the heart of the, of the country. We're very close to Amsterdam, we're, we're very close to everything because Holland is such a small country. Everything's easy to reach by train, by car and even by bicycle of course. Mm -hmm. And that's the bicycle, that's the most important uh, way of transport in Holland. We have 17 million people but over 20 million bicycles. Short distances, a flat country, so it's a favorite way of transport of the Dutch. Maybe it has to do something with how the Dutch feel in general, because we belong to the 10 most lucky people in the world, and uh, <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> the Netherlands is considered in the top 10 of quality of life. No, yeah, in general, but of course there's two sides of the, of the coin you can say. Of course we have people that are uh, less educated uh, or people from abroad that have to try to, to, to find a place in our society and that's always difficult. We have a difficult language for foreigners, difficult to learn. When you're able to integrate and you have your place, your work and education as well, you have a lot of possibilities. Our education system it's, it's okay to, to develop yourself for work and learning and so on. But of course we have our trouble because uh, Europe isn't leading anymore in the world. Um, uh, other countries are coming up and we have to follow that change. And that's, that's quite difficult. But I think we, we know how to deal with that. We are famous because of our uh, agricultural pr products. That's one, one of the number five countries in the world of export all over the world. We have our manufacturing, although that's less than, let's say, 50 years ago, because the wages are so high, so lots of uh, manufacturing has gone to other countries where it's cheaper to produce them. But uh, we have also a lot of jobs in services. We have our transport, we have a big harbor, the biggest harbor in, in Europe, Rotterdam. A lot of projects has to be transported all over the continent and that's partly done by the Dutch truckers. 
So that's also an important way of making money in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here in the former trading heart of, uh, of Utrecht. Here great money was made centuries ago and there were uh, sailing boats laying here and they brought in their trading goods and they were loaded and lo unloaded here on these platforms. And these sellers behind the doors, they were used to store the goods. This whole construction of these sellers on the, the level under the street and under the houses, it's, it's unique in the world. And we have a few kilometers of it on both sides of the Oude and the Nieuwe Gracht. And maybe, maybe one day they will be placed on the World Heritage List of UNESCO. They're talking about it for years already. So maybe it will happen and you will find them nowhere else in the world. Trading time is over here because the train took over the long distance transport and the truck took over the short distance transport. So no uh, trading boats anymore here. And all those sellers now here in the shopping heart, they are restaurants and here on the, the former loading and unloading platforms, there are terraces. And here is a great atmosphere and beautiful weather. Hundreds of people are sitting here having uh, their food and drinks and uh, enjoy the nice atmosphere of Utrecht. In Utrecht, the quiet areas and the busy areas are very close together. And uh, when you walk just a few hundred meters, you're in total silence in an area like this. Here we have our shops, our restaurants, cafes and public areas. And it's always busy. Bicycles everywhere, of course, and a lot of pedestrians. This is, for example, uh, it's not allowed to be here with, uh, with a car. A part of the, of the old historical heart is car-free, you can say. So it's easy to walk, easy to cycle, but always busy, especially in weather like this. The Dutch are friendly, yeah. And uh, it has to do with their history, I think, because we needed uh, to, to, to cooperate in early ages when we had uh, the trouble with water, we had our polders. You have to trust your neighbor. You have to talk with him. And now we are a densely crowded uh, country, 17 million people on such a small piece of earth. When you're on a small part of such a small part of the world like Holland, with so many people, you have to be sociable and uh, you have to talk with people, you have to adapt. The Dutch are social. And it has to do with, uh, with so many people on such a small piece of earth. You have to, uh, to talk with each other, you have to understand each other, because everybody, everyone needs his own part of the country in its own piece of space. You have to be tolerant, because we are with so many people. We build our cities on a human scale, compact, because we needed every square meter. Not like Singapore or any Chinese style or something like that. The, the Dutch like the way of, they, build, uh, they build already for centuries. And we, uh, when you use everything very accurate and very well planned, you can build on a human scale on such a small part of the world and accommodate such a lot of people. I think that the Dutch are sociable because it's also, it also has to do with the way of transport. Everything's close by here. You, need, uh, you use a bicycle, so you, you meet people, you see people, you greet people, uh, or you're, uh, you're walking, or you take a bus, so you're constantly surrounded by people. I think in some other countries where you have a lot of space, you have big gardens, and your neighbor is always far away, and you need a car for transport because the distances are too big to cycle. Uh, but in the car you're isolated, so when you have short distances, you can walk, you can take your bicycle, you always meet people. I'm sure it has to do with sociability. So come to Utrecht and see and feel this unique atmosphere in the heart of Holland. It's beautiful, enjoy it! Utrecht is a very lively city and it's partly because uh, we are a university city. Altogether are, uh, there are thousands of students and, and of course they bring a lot of, a lot of uh, music, a lot of culture, a lot of pubs and so on. So we have a very lively city heart uh, shopping centre with also a lot of restaurants, pubs, music and so on. Utrecht is one of the oldest universities in the Netherlands and it was founded in, uh, in March 1636 
And uh, it started as a small university, of course. Not everybody could go to university, only the, the people in a high rank in, in social, uh, social life, you can say. And only for men, of course. But the University of Utrecht has grown to a, to a big one and to a very famous one in our days, world famous. Uh, here uh, behind me there's uh, the academy building and that was a gift of the community of Utrecht. It was given in the 1880s and it was built here and there was a lot of struggle about this building because it's uh, in neo-renaissance style and it's close to the Dom Tower and the Dom Church and these are famous buildings in true Gothic style so after the struggle uh, they ordered well let's build it and it was finished in uh, 1892 uh, in those days it was the main office of the university almost everything happened here Nowadays we have thousands of students, so this is more a representative building. So here are graduations almost every day, when important people visit Utrecht, sometimes kings or queens, and they visit the university, they come to this building. And I was graduated in the university building. Human geography, yes. Human geography. Yes. Here we are standing on the Dom Square, and this is in fact the place where it all started almost 2,000 years ago, because the Romans built their fortification on this spot. And here they stayed for about 250 years. Here the first church in this area of Europe was built by Willibrod in 695. And from here the Roman Catholic religion was spread. There were always churches standing here since the first one of Willibrod. And the church that's here now at the moment is famous, first of all, because of the tower, but also because of what happened to the building. Here you see uh, the remaining part of the church and on the choir, they started to build it in 1254. And when the choir was finished, the bishop ordered to build the tower. The tower was built from 1320 till 1382 all by hand in only 62 years, try to realize. It's 112 meters and 32 centimeters high, and it's uh, the tallest church tower in the Netherlands. Around 75,000 people from all over the world climb the 465 steps to a level of 95 meters, and they have a great view over the heart of the country. After the tower, they continued with the transept. And when the transept was finished, they started to build the nave. And the church was completed in uh, 1525. Then it was all there. It was the cathedral. Cathedral is the seat of the bishop. The cathedral of Utrecht. The main church. The pride of the city. But something terrible happened. At the 1st of August 1674. A big, big storm came from the north of France over this country. Probably the worst storm ever in this part of Europe. And a tornado, yes, a small tornado, but a tornado, hit the nave of the church and the whole building collapsed. The tower, the transept and the, and the, and the, and the choir survived, but the nave was broken to pieces. Inside the church there's a graphic display board that illustrates what happened during the storm. You see the complete church and then destruction of the central portion. The nave is gone. What remains, however, is a truly spectacular Gothic building. Tall columns reaching towards heaven at the ambulatory and the altar and the choir areas, beautifully preserved. Be sure to have a look inside. The ruins were laying here for about 150 years. They were taken away in 1826. And since then, we have a Dom Square. And it's now the heart of lots of cultural events in, si in the city. This is the place where it all started. So this is the main spot of the Utrecht history. We're standing here at the Nieuwe Gracht, the new canal. This is quiet here. There is hardly any traffic and there are hardly any shops. And it was also here in the Middle Ages. <laughs> Beside a kayak or a pedal boat, you can also make a booking on a small electric boat. And you have a tour. The captain will tell you something about uh, what's uh, around it, something about the history of uh, where you're floating through. And so you have a great impression of a beautiful part of the old city. And now I've cooked up something special for you, combining a boat ride with history. As our guide just mentioned, one of the features of some of the boat rides is the captain will 
tell you about the history and the sights as you go by. Well, I took a boat and I was about the only one on the boat, so there wasn't much of a history lecture. But instead, we're going to have Gita provide some narration. He didn't actually come on the boat ride, but he knows so much about the fascinating history of this place that he was describing as we walked along that I'm going to just transplant his narration onto the visuals of the boat ride so we can have the best of both worlds here. A scenic boat ride through the canals of Utrecht with some historic information provided by our local expert. So Utrecht was in fact founded by the Romans almost 2000 years ago in the year 47 after Christ. They came here and they uh, built a fortification on what we now call the Dom Square. And that fortification was uh, a part of a defensive line that started in Cologne in Germany and ended up at the North Sea. And on the left side of the, the old River Rhine, they built their fortifications on the distance between each one uh, four to five kilometers. So they could easily see each other in those days. And the Romans stayed here for about 250 years and then they went back to the south because tribes of the north uh, tried to attack them and the attacks were too severe so they went back to the south and uh, the ages after that it isn't very sure what happened here but very important was the year uh, 695 because then a monk from Ireland came to, uh, to the continent and in the, uh, the ruin of the Roman uh, fortification he built his first Roman Catholic church and from there he started to spread the Roman Catholic religion over northwestern Europe. It was the start of a great time for Utrecht because in the centuries afterwards Utrecht developed to be the, the well let's say the capital of the Roman Catholic Church in this part of Europe. Utrecht became very very rich, very very powerful. The Bishop of Utrecht was very very powerful and when you compare Holland from nowadays to in the Middle Ages, you can say a third part of the country was the bishop of the Bishop of Utrecht. So a big part of the country he owned and he ruled that. Utrecht became famous. They built a lot of churches, uh, monasteries, and Utrecht also uh, started to be really a city. They have city rights since the 2nd of June 1122. So that makes Utrecht one of the oldest cities in the Netherlands. When you compare it to Amsterdam, for example, all, uh, Amsterdam had its city rights for almost two centuries later. Because Utrecht was built on the Roman Catholic Church and Amsterdam is built on the trade, on the economy. And that was a few centuries later. So Utrecht is very much older than Amsterdam. And uh, that famous time of the, of the Roman Catholic religion ended in 1580 because that was the year of the Reformation. Utrecht switched from the Catholic to the Protestant religion. And it was officially not allowed to be Catholic anymore. And uh, all the power of the Catholic Church was over. Utrecht uh, still already had the Oude Gracht, the canal. And um, it was on a very important trade line from Amsterdam to what we now call uh, the Ruhrgebiet in, in Germany. So there was a lot of trade between those parts of Europe and Utrecht became a center of trade on the line from Amsterdam to what we now call Germany. So there was also a lot of money made by, uh, by the trade. After, the, after the, the Catholic Church then the, the trade came. Later trade center the, that function was over because it was taken over by for example Amsterdam. In the 14th and 15th century, Utrecht was famous because of the power of the, of the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, the church ordered also to develop the, the swamp areas all around Utrecht, especially in the west, because, uh, as you know, probably, uh, the western part of Holland is below sea level. So there was a lot of swamps. And they ordered to make them dry so they could uh, use the area for, uh, for cattle, for uh, growing the different stuff and so on. Before the Reformation there were two parts of big power and, and big money, the church and the trade. Because Utrecht was the, the biggest city in this area because of the Catholic Church. And you can see that also when you see the, the, the historical heart of the city. Uh, Utrecht was founded in fact as a city in 1122. And then uh, the people of the church said, well, there will be our defensive line, our canals, our walls, and so on. And because of their power, Utrecht has the biggest medieval heart, medieval city heart of all the cities in the Netherlands. 
because of the church. The, the main trade city in, in the west of Holland was Utrecht. Uh, but later Amsterdam took over and that was the period, the time of the VOC, Verenigde Oost-Indische Compagnie. And uh, that was founded in 1603 and then the trade started between uh, Indonesia. Our, our colony in, in Asia, as you know, because the whole area of Indonesia, all those thousand islands, were a part of Holland during three centuries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first Utrecht and then Amsterdam took over. And Amsterdam became the world's most powerful city uh, on, on the trade. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Golden Age. The Golden Age, yes, yes. Brazil was a part of Holland, but we sold it to, uh, to Portugal. <laughs> because we could make money then. <laughs> like you sold New York to the British. For example, the small Republic of the Netherlands was one of the most powerful countries in those days. There are three countries in the history that had world power. Nowadays, it's a little bit over the United States. The 19th century is, of course, Great Britain. And before that, that tiny, small Republic with only with less than a million people, inhabitants, that was the first country that ruled the world because of the trade. Thanks very much, Gitta, for a lovely walking tour. and. Nice historical narration as we enjoyed the boat ride. And now we're going to go look for some more history and art at three of Utrecht's main museums. Walking a few blocks towards the southern end of the old town. Along the way, we ran into another one of the many cats of the city. The Dutch are mad about cats. These small furry animals make the ideal urban pet because they can roam around in the streets and take care of themselves and then come home when they feel like it for some extra care. And these cats played a role in the history of the Netherlands being a nautical nation with a lot of ships. They helped control the rodent population. Behind this Baroque facade is a charitable foundation that provides funding for education of young people. And right next to it, the Central Museum. The museum has been housed in a medieval cloister since 1921 and has expanded into a collection of nearby buildings with a large courtyard and open-air cafe at their center. As described on their website, it's the oldest city collection in the Netherlands with a broad and comprehensive collection of modern and old art, design, fashion, urban history, and applied art. It's a lovely place to wander in three levels with 10 major gallery areas through the hallways and stairwells that can get a little bit confusing, but they'll provide a map for you. And you'll be surprised by various exhibitions featuring the rich history of the city of Utrecht. It houses the works of mostly local artists stretching from the ancient Roman occupation right up through modern times. The permanent collection is enhanced by regular special exhibits. And of course, one of their star attractions here is a model of the cathedral, Utrecht's most important building that we visited earlier. There's a little workshop going on for some of the local students where they were gathered together at a work table with a hands-on activity, making some kind of little models. Oh, it's of the cathedral tower the icon of the city, the symbol of Utrecht. Back on the street, we're looking for the next museum, which is just a few blocks away on Lange Neustraat. It's the University Museum of Utrecht, open every day from 10 to 5. It's an active research institution, and the museum features various kinds of scientific exhibits, some of it in the Cabinet of Curiosities. Lots of bones and skeletons and stuffed animals and scientific instrumentation. And they also have a botanical garden, which presents quite a contrast, where you're out in a greenhouse in the backyard. You'd never realize such a big exhibit can exist behind its small shop front. Walking a few blocks further along the same street past these lovely historical buildings, to our third and final museum, featuring a collection of religious artifacts and a nice cafe in the lobby. Museum Katerina Convent. Museum Katerina Convent. Convent. Wander the halls of this former medieval monastery building that goes back to the 14th century. Then marvel at the glittering gold and silver in the treasury 
and precious Gothic sculpture that formerly adorned the old churches of the city. As promised earlier in the movie, we're going to end the show with a final look at the night lights of Utrecht. The central canal area is beautifully illuminated in the evening. You really want to be around at night to experience this special ambiance. In this final minute, let's consider how to handle your visit to Utrecht. Do you come here as a day trip from someplace else or do you come and spend at least one night, maybe two, at a hotel in Utrecht? It's up to you, but as you've seen, there is much to enjoy in this wonderful city. And it could be done either way. Let's consider the possibilities. If you come as a day trip, you really want to spend the day and the evening, as you see here with this beautiful lighting, and have dinner at one of these outdoor restaurants. It looks so nice. And then you could take a late train back to your home city. Perhaps Amsterdam, it's just a half an hour away on the fast train schedule. Or better yet, stay a night or two in Utrecht. That way after dinner, you can just take a leisurely stroll, you're relaxing, back to your hotel, spend the night. The trade-off is you have to deal with your suitcases, moving from one city to the next is never a lot of fun, but it's easy enough here, the distances are short, and it's an easy walk from the train station into the old town with many hotels available. So do yourself a favor and give Utrecht a couple of days. One of the Netherlands' best destinations We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.